Hey, what's going on people? Check it out. Everybody's always asking me, how do you use this theory inside of practical playing? You know, where do you use this stuff? We're going to be talking about how you use that, where it comes from, and how to put it in your playing right now. So for an example, I'm just playing a groove in D Dorian. Kind of got carried away a little bit using some different effects, using the looper pedal. Uh, by the way, MXR clone looper is what I'm using right now if you guys happen to care. Anyway, so I'm using a looper pedal, just creating a beat, creating a vibe here. So the mode that I choose to use in this groove is a Dorian mode. So I'm just staying there, laying down the foundation in this vibe in the key of B. So minor scale with a natural six. Now, when I'm talking about modes, I'm talking about Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian. Sounds like I'm talking a different language, right? So those are the modes. Those are just the key center of what we're trying to base it off of. So I'm in the key of B Dorian. So that's what I'm using as my base. If it was Ionian, it would be. If it was Aeolian or minor, natural minor, it will be. With that regular minor six instead of a that one note makes the difference. So I'm just choosing to play in that mode. So this is where I would use that same exact thing. When I did a little bit of soloing, if you guys can see, I started playing around with that mode. So I based it off of that. That's one way we can implement modes into our playing. Most times when you play funk or you hear it, it's mostly in that Dorian mode, that minor third and a natural six, or a Mixolydian mode, that uh, major third and a flat seven. So sometimes you hear those two. Those are the most common to me that I hear, but those are the ones that I like or that I prefer. So let's just play around with that groove and I'll show you how that Dorian scale fits inside of it. Here we go. And then with that bass line, I'm doing a very simple bass line going from B to A to the D, do, 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 to that minor third, to the, uh, to the F sharp, do, 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 da, do, 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 do. and I'm just using a thumb index finger technique so I can kind of rake that a little bit better instead of puck plucking it. Usually when I find that, let's go off topic for a minute. But usually when I pluck with the thumb and the index, it's easier for me to swing that versus swinging with playing the index and the middle finger. It's, hard to, it's harder to do that. So I usually use my thumb and my index. Anyway, so I use my thumb and my index just for that technique. Let's get back to the groove. So Dorian scale, B Dorian scale. Now, strictly talking improv, you can go all over the place with this Dorian scale. Yeah, so right there, I like that. I like that. That, that A flat. Which is the natural six, which makes that different from a natural minor scale. So that natural six, when you land on that, it just gives that essence. So I like to play around with that note a lot just to make sure, hey, I'm in Dorian, just to let them know, let whoever, you know, who's listening know that this is Dorian. And I did that with that upper part. Same, same thing, right? utilizing that natural six to, it, to its advantage. So right here I can use the scale. Uh, you know, using the natural minor, uh, natural, not natural minor, but the Dorian scale around the fretboard. 
and I'm using an extended version of the scale so I can think of more ideas because if you're stuck in the box with one through octave, sometimes it's harder to think of different phrases and different ideas or be as creative as you can be. So, so I would learn that on the E string first position. One, three, four, one, three, stretch four, one, three, stretch four again. Same thing, next string, one, three, stretch four. And it's pretty simple too because you have the same thing on three strings. You get it? So, very simple. So you can mix those notes around. And mix those notes around, have fun with. So I'm just taking the shape. If you see, I'm, visualize the shape with me. Focus in on the shape, right? So, using three notes on one string, three notes on the next string, three notes on the next string. All you're doing is going down the string and using the same exact notes. Using, I mean, using the same exact position, but different notes. So it's easier to visualize that versus trying to make up or trying to figure out, okay, is this a minor six? Is this a natural minor six? Is this a minor third? Is this a flat five? Is, you know, trying to figure that out. So visualize it. Just playing random notes, but hear how it sounds. now but you see this shape you see I was creating ideas just playing with the visual shape coming up with some things just experimenting that's what it's all about I come up with that arpeggio <laughs> Yeah, coming up with arpeggios and things like that that you can use that are inside of the scale. And we've learned about these arpeggios already inside of it as well. So you have a Dorian arpeggio or a minor seven arpeggio starting from the root note. B flat, uh, minor three, five flat seven or minor seven. That is just the um, a dominant seven. So a major triad with a flat seven on the top. Okay, and that's just going up using the mixolydian mode. So the Dorian scale, which is the key that we're in, starting on the B, and the mixolydian scale would land on the E, the major scale with the flat seven right underneath. And if you take the arpeggio of that one, that's where you get that arpeggio that I kind of discovered or came across uh, while just experimenting. But I played it in a different position. I moved that three, I did it first position. So one, stretch three. Second finger for the five or the five of that arpeggio. And the flat seven there. And I can stretch, now I can stretch because I did it in that position, I can stretch now to that F sharp. So it's, there's so much you can think of and come up with when you're playing this type of groove and this type of Dorian groove. Uh, just think of the scale, think of the arpeggios. I was talking uh, before inside of the uh, academy to one of the members trying to figure out songs and when you're playing a groove or when you're playing with a band and you sit down and you try to figure it out, your ear might not be that great, but there's a few things that you need to know or you need to try to discover or try to understand before you go to play. First of all, it's just the tonality of the song, of, of the key, if it's major or minor, just off the bat. That's one thing. The next thing are, what are the chords? What key are they in? What's, is, what's the actual key? What's the note, <laughs> right? What's the note? We gotta find that too. 
also the scale that they're using. It could be a minor, but it could be a Dorian, but it could be a natural minor. Okay, so that's the next thing we need to figure out because that'll determine the chord tones inside of the arpeggios or the chords that we use. Next thing is, I said chord tones, right? So chord tones, right? The next thing is the melody or whatever melody is being used inside of that. Sometimes that helps determine what the key of the song or what the feel or the vibe of the song or the tonality of the song is as far as the chord tones go uh, and the chord progression. So the melody sometimes takes, you know, precedence when you're trying to figure that out. All right, so all of those things or all of those elements you can combine into figuring that out. And sometimes people that are really talented or some people that have a lot of experience, they figure it out in one second because they've been doing it for so long, but that's just time. That's, that takes time and you'll be able to analyze and dissect and rip apart a song as soon as you hear it. Okay, boom, that's that chord. I can play it back to you. Uh, sometimes you see that with, well, not sometimes, but with perfect pitch, somebody being able, being able to uh, sing back the same exact note or know exactly what note you're singing or what note is being played at the time uh, within a split second. So anyway, hopefully this gave you some ideas of just what you can use and how this corresponds with playing modes or theory inside of grooves or inside of, uh, you know, your everyday playing. Um, hopefully, like I said, hopefully that gave you some ideas that you can use. Um, take them, stretch them, take them and run with them. I say that all the time. Um, and hopefully you can get something from it. If you guys are interested in taking your bass playing to the next level, strongly, strongly suggest that you check out Bass Nation Academy. That's where it's at. We have a video Q&A section there. It's just a member area. Or oh, the whole thing is a membership area. But video Q&A section, I'll give you personal feedback. So if you're struggling with anything, uh, you'll be able to upload your video and we can converse and talk back and forth so you can enhance your playing just that much more just for me personally. So that's a great feature of the site. That's just the, that's not, that's just tip of the iceberg. Uh, but anyway, there's so much more. There's live stream classes. There's lessons being released all the time. Uh, there's courses, there's beginner courses, slap courses, gospel courses uh, coming up very soon, actually. Um, more courses, uh, modes courses, theory courses. But anyway, if you're interested in that, please go check it out. Uh, it'll be in the description or I'll put a link here on the screen somewhere. Uh, you'll be able to get to it. And then when you get there, shoot me a message. Let me know you came from YouTube. I would love to see subscribers coming and transition into the academy. It's a great feeling just to see your progress and just to see guys uh, with a familiar face coming into the academy. Anyway, won't bore you anymore with that. Uh, if you have any questions, you know what to do. Write them in the comment section. Uh, make sure you're also coming out clean, clear, and precise, like I always say. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.